Okay, colleagues, I uh, thank you all for your forbearance. Um, I will now make a start, and the next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 9422 in the name of Elaine Smith on celebrating and supporting breastfeeding in public. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible, please. And I now call on Elaine Smith to open the debate, please. Thank you very much, President Officer. I'm really pleased to be able to lead a debate today on the important issue of breastfeeding, which is not discussed enough either in society or in Parliament. According to SPICE, it's never been the principal subject of a government-led debate in the Scottish Parliament in all the time that the Parliament has been here. And I think that's concerning because low breastfeeding rates cost money and lives, as proven in the UNICEF Commission report of last year, preventing disease and saving resources. And I'll expand on this later. But firstly, I want to welcome the health workers, mums and babies in the gallery from my constituency and from other parts of Scotland. And I want to extend a particularly warm welcome to Jenny Warren, who was our National Breastfeeding Advisor until 2005. Unfortunately, that post no longer exists. I think that's a bit of a problem since the WHO strategy spells out the need to appoint a national breastfeeding coordinator and we don't seem to have an infant feeding advisor in post either. A breastfeeding friendly Scotland needs commitment and understanding from our young people. So I'm also pleased that members of Coatbridge and Christ and Youth Forum have joined us here today and are taking an interest in the issue. Breastfeeding mum Emily Slough's abuse on Facebook shows us that appalling misogynistic insults are still being aimed at mothers for normal nurturing maternal behaviour. And I want to congratulate Emily and the thousands who supported her from across the UK in protesting against such atrocious attitudes. I don't have time to go into the sexual politics, but I'm sure others will do so. I just want to say it's a crazy situation that it's OK for breasts to be ogled at on page three, but not seen in public to feed hungry babies. During the, during the passage of my private member's bill, I detailed the advantages of mother's milk, and I'll leave it to others to mention the undisputed health benefits of this unique designer food. Today, I want to concentrate my limited time on other aspects of our low breastfeeding rates and the effect on our nation's health. In the politics of breastfeeding, Gabrielle Palmer tells us that every 30 seconds a baby dies from infections due to a lack of breastfeeding and the use of bottles, artificial milks and other risky products. She goes on to say that if a multinational company developed a product that was a nutritionally balanced and delicious food, a wonder drug that both prevented and treated disease, cost almost nothing to produce and could be delivered in quantities controlled by consumers' needs, the announcement of this find would send its shares rocketing to the, stock, the top of the stock market. However, of course, instead of women who produce this miraculous substance being celebrated, supported and encouraged to feed their designer food to their babies, big corporations profit from selling an inferior substitute. So how did that happen? Well, in the late 1800s, improvements in dairy production led to whey surplus and it needed a market outlet. And that became the base for artificial baby milk, not because research proved it to be the most suitable food, but because it was there and because it was cheap. So big business found an outlet for a byproduct of the milk industry. And then they sold that inferior product via aggressive marketing to women who then paid for it, rather than using the fabulous exclusive free product that they produced themselves. It's frankly quite unbelievable. In their global strategy for infant and young child feeding, WHO and UNICEF say lack of breastfeeding and especially lack of exclusive breastfeeding during the first half year of life are important risk factors for infant and childhood morbidity and mortality. In other words, Breastfeeding can be, uh, sorry, in other words, not breastfeeding can be very bad for children's health. Now, as a society, we shy away from putting it in those terms. And I think that's perhaps in case we offend those who have chosen to artificially feed or those who simply can't breastfeed. The latter are a tiny minority. It's less than 1%. And there are, of course, other options like milk banks, which I think is an issue that needs further discussion. But in worrying about offending some parents, we actually put lives at risk. 
and we fail to take important steps to challenge our ill health and obesity, and we spend vast sums dealing with the consequences. We really need to ensure that society is well educated in the wonders of breast milk and the dangers of artificial milk, so that families can make real informed choices rather than just following social norms with no idea of the risks. Most parents want what's best for their children, but I don't believe the majority actually know what formula milk is and why it's so different to breast milk. So I think it's understandable then that uh, so many choose to use it. In the UNICEF Commission report, which I mentioned earlier, this not only tells us that low breastfeeding rates lead to an increased incidence of illness with a significant cost to the NHS, but they also put those facts into hard figures. And I think that's probably for the first time. And that shows that moderate increases in breastfeeding translate into huge cost savings. So, for example, if only half the mothers who don't breastfeed were to do so for up to 18 months, there would be 865 fewer cases of breast cancer, saving £21 million and improved quality of life, equating to more than £10 million for each annual cohort of first-time mothers. And if 45% of babies were exclusively breastfed for four months and 75% in neonatal units were breastfed at discharge, there would be over 3,000 fewer babies hospitalised with gastroenteritis and nearly 6,000 fewer babies hospitalised with respiratory illness and over 300 fewer cases of the potentially fatal disease NEC. Together, that would save more than £16.3 million. Those were all in the first category of savings where it was possible to provide quantitative economic models based on strong evidence. But there's another three categories, including an increase in IQ, fewer cases of SIDS and reductions in childhood obesity. Those categories need a wee bit more research. But the report shows conclusively that breastfeeding is a major public health issue and that low rates cost the NHS millions each year. So what should we do? Well, I would propose better support in communities, inclusion of breastfeeding education in school curriculums, as well as giving proper information about the risks of not breastfeeding to parents. We also, I feel, need regular reports to Parliament on the progress of the Scottish Government's framework and the specific steps taken to increase rates, sustain breastfeeding and change societal attitudes. The report that I mentioned tells us we need breastfeeding to be a priority for all NHS boards, effective implementation of baby-friendly initiative standards, access to well-trained health professionals that understand the benefits of breastfeeding, further research and funding, and strengthening and using legislation like the Breastfeeding Scotland Act. As far as I'm aware, it's only been used once, resulting in a slap in the wrist letter for a company who verbally abused a mother and baby and threw them out onto Sucky Hall Street. And I hope women uh, report any attempts to stop them breastfeeding in public to the police because it's illegal and I hope proper action can be taken. And perhaps the Minister, uh, sorry, Cabinet Secretary could tell us why the promotion leaflet for the Breastfeeding Act um, has not been reprinted, because that is important. It is worrying that so many people talk about discrete breastfeeding, and the government's own website does that too. We need to be seeing it and talking about it if we are to fundamentally change social attitudes and encourage others to breastfeed. On Monday, blogger Mama Bean made the point saying that breastfeeding should not be a secret art form preserved for private rooms and hushed conversations. We really need increased government commitment to ensure that the barriers for mothers are removed and for society to recognise that breastfeeding is normal and should be seen in public. And the reward for this will be a, a much healthier population, less illness for babies and massive savings for the NHS. So, presiding officer, celebrating and supporting breastfeeding is good for mums and babies, it's good for society and it's good for the public purse. Breast is indeed best. Thanks very much. I now call on Cara Hilton to be followed by Jamie Hepburn. As we're very tight for time today, up to four minutes, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Apologies, um, President Officer, I didn't hear you then. Uh, can I begin by congratulating Elaine Smith on securing this debate and on her excellent contribution? Elaine's obviously got a long history of champi champion breastfeeding, both inside and outside the Parliament, and this debate is certainly a timely one. When the Breastfeeding Scotland Bill was passed back in 2004, Elaine Smith said that this, the bill is not an end, but the beginning of the Parliament pursuing practical ways to support and encourage breastfeeding. 
2004 was also the year that I first became a, a mum, and I've still been, remember, been annoyed at the time that I was kept in hospital for four nights after my son was born until I could get breastfeeding established. Uh, the other mums in the ward, they were all formula feeding and got home the next day, but I was determined to breastfeed, even though it was a lot harder than what I imagined. But looking back, my longer stay in hospital was absolutely vital in ensuring that I could breastfeed my son, and he was, he was exclusively breastfed for the first six months, or at least that's what I thought until my mum told me later that she'd given him some ice cream. Uh, but I've since gotten on to breastfeed my other two children, most recently my youngest, who was seven weeks premature and was breastfed through a tube until he was able to manage himself. But I have to confess, the idea of feeding them in public always filled me with dread. And like many mums, I would plan my day to avoid being out at feeding time. And have to admit, I always felt slightly envious of my bottle feeding friends who could be out all day without any worry. Uh, leaving home after having your first child is always a challenge, to be fair. It was lunchtime, I think, before I got out for the first six months. But it can even more, be more of a challenge when you're breastfeeding. In fact, research suggests that half of UK women who have breastfed in public have had at least one negative experience. Despite the, West, the widespread recognition that breast is best, in many places, in many of our communities, it's virtually impossible to feed a baby in public without people staring at you and without attracting both verbal and non-verbal signs of disapproval. And sadly, for too many mums, these negative reactions can lead them to stop breastfeeding altogether. I was shocked to read about the experiences of Emily Slough, who was thrown out of Sports Direct for breastfeeding her eight-month-old baby, and then, worse still, subjected to abuse on social media, labelled as a tramp, and subjected to a whole host of shocking comments just for feeding her baby. Someone suggested that it would not be, be more dignified if she breastfed in a public toilet. Emily fought back and organised mass breastfeeding protests. Thousands of mums came out in support of Emily across the UK. Many more signed a pub an online petition demanding that Sports Direct apologise and stop discriminating against breastfeeding mums. When well, mums here are protected by the Breastfeeding Scotland Act, as Elaine Smith has mentioned, many women are simply unaware that this vital protection exists. The Act makes it a criminal offence to stop or attempt to stop mums from feeding in public. And given the recent outcry, cry, surely the time is now right to do more to publicise this landmark legislation and send out the message that mums in Scotland who want to breastfeed in public have got the full protection of the law behind them. And I hope that that is something the Minister will consider, because it is absolutely vital that we do more to promote breastfeeding rates to mums of all backgrounds across Scotland. We have had many debates in the Chamber about child poverty and inequality, but one of the best ways of tackling health inequality and giving our children the best start in life is through breastfeeding. Yet for the past decade, breastfeeding rates have remained largely static, with, just, with half of mums breastfeeding at 10 days and only one in four mums breastfeeding exclusively six to eight weeks later. Nine out of ten women who stop breastfeeding before their baby is six weeks old say they would like to have breastfed longer. Often mums just need a bit more support and more information, and here breastfeeding support groups are absolutely vital. And this is especially important for mums in more deprived areas where breastfeeding rates are amongst the lowest, where mums are often younger, and where there's less likely to be a family history of breastfeeding. Too often we hear mums being told, just give the wee one a bottle so you can get a rest. And too often breastfeeding mums are being made to feel that the milk alone isn't enough to sustain a large or hungry baby, when this simply isn't true. So it's absolutely vital that the Scottish Government addresses this important public health issue by doing more to promote health benefits of, to mums and babies, by ensuring that every mum can access the peer and professional support they need, and perhaps most importantly, by promoting and celebrating breastfeeding in shops, cafes, libraries, parks and public places across Scotland. Thank you so much. I now call on Jamie Hepburn to be followed by Dr Elaine Murray. Thank you very much, Mr President. Officer. Can I join uh, Carol Hilton in uh, thanking Elaine Smith for bringing forward uh, this uh, debate. I think this issue is very worthy uh, of our discussion today. And, uh, I just want to make a, a few uh, comments in the time I, I have. And I wanted to start off, uh, President Officer, by mentioning uh, I happened to notice on uh, Facebook uh, earlier this week a, a photograph split into two images. Uh, the first of a woman uh, breastfeeding her child uh, in a cafe under the disapproving glare of other cu uh, customers. It's a company of a caption that says uh, a shawl is a handy tool uh, for sparing embarrassment when breastfeeding. And then in the second image, uh, the shawl is draped over the dis disapproving customers as a woman uh, continues to feed her child. It probably works better as a visual gag rather than uh, being described by me today. But I mentioned it uh, as I thought it was actually rather a, a clever and amusing way of reminding us that if anyone is embarrassed by the sight of a mother feeding uh, their child, it's their problem, not the problem of the woman undertaking one of the most perfectly natural uh, activities 
in the world, or at least that's the way it should uh, be. Uh, having congratulated Elaine Smith uh, for uh, securing this debate, I, I think it's also appropriate we should congratulate Emily uh, Slough, Slou, who is referred to in uh, the motion for organising uh, mass uh, breastfeeding events to highlight uh, problems uh, mothers uh, face all too uh, regularly. I think we should reflect on the fact she was uh, thrust into the limelight uh, rather uh, unwittingly because of the idiocy of uh, someone passing by uh, was breastfeeding her child, someone who thought it appropriate to uh, sur surreptitiously photograph her and post uh, this image on the internet with the caption, uh, a tramp, which I find uh, appalling that anyone would think that was in any way uh, either an appropriate or an amusing, uh, an apparently amusing thing uh, to do. And, and she and uh, those who responded to this with the defiance in the face of such uh, st stupidity and held uh, the mass breastfeeding events should uh, be congratulated uh, for uh, their efforts. I think it is important to remind ourselves of the benefits of uh, breastfeeding. I thought Elaine Smith did that rather comprehensively, but we should uh, remind ourselves that breastfeed uh, babies uh, have uh, uh, better neurological development, cholesterol levels, uh, and blood pressure. There are also benefits uh, to uh, uh, women who breastfeed. They are at lower risk of breast cancer, ovarian uh, cancer, hip fractures, and reduced uh, bone density. And of course, uh, research continues, and uh, 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 there are other uh, benefits being researched uh, as well. And I thought it was interesting. Carol Hilton is quite right to point out there is still uh, an issue in terms of uh, women breastfeeding uh, children in the longer term. But we should reflect on the fact uh, UNICEF uh, UK uh, point out the uh, NHS information uh, centre uh, infant feeding survey does indicate there has been some uh, uh, improvement in uh, the proportion of breastfed uh, uh, babies at birth in the UK, rising by 5 per cent from 2005 uh, to 2010, from 76 per cent to 81 uh, per cent, which is obviously positive, although we should reflect the fact in Scotland the figure was 74 per cent uh, uh, in uh, 2010, so it shows we can still do better uh, in uh, Scotland. And of course, the challenge is that so many mothers uh, find it difficult to breastfeed in public, largely due to the ignorance of others. A survey conducted uh, by uh, Camelison uh, chamomile ointment in 2011 reported that 38 per cent of breastfeeding mothers choose, choose to breastfeed uh, in public toilets where they are due to unwanted attention and glares they may receive off the general public. It reported that 12 per cent have actually been asked to stop feeding their baby in the public, and 14 per cent have been reduced to a full-scale argument with someone who objected to them feeding uh, their uh, baby. I have to say good to, uh, for them for standing up uh, for themselves and shame on those who forced them into a position where they uh, had to do so in uh, the first place. So I think it is important uh, then uh, that we uh, uh, challenge any perception that women should have to uh, breastfeed uh, in private. I hope that can be a message uh, from Dana. We should also remind ourselves, as has been mentioned by both Elaine Smith and Cara Hilton, that this parliament has legislated to protect uh, the rights of mothers to feed uh, their children. The breastfeeding sector Scotland Act 2005 is very clear. It is an offence deliberately to prevent or stop a person in charge of a child from feeding milk to that child in a public place on licensed premises. Uh, this parliament has acted, and of course we need to see that in action on the ground. And I hope that will form an important uh, part of the message from today's debate. And can I once more uh, congratulate Elaine Smith for securing the debate today? Thanks very much. Now call on Dr. Elaine Murray to be followed by Jane Baxter. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I start by congratulating Elaine Smith not only on securing today's debate, but on the unswerving commitment she has given to promoting breastfeeding, and in particular breastfeeding in public, in this Parliament over the last 15 years. I don't think anybody has done more to promote breastfeeding uh, than Elaine Smith uh, since the beginning of this Parliament. And that, of course, includes her Members' Bill in 2005, uh, which protected mothers wishing to breastfeed in public. And indeed, she's had members' motions on that since. Promoting breastfeeding in public is more controversial than just promoting breastfeeding per se, and Elaine Smith has had the courage over the years to take uh, that on that uh, controversy. I think today she made the very important point uh, that the milk, su milk substitute uh, is actually a byproduct of the dairy industry. It is not designed to suit young human beings, uh, and actually, biochemically, it is actually nothing like human milk. Encouraging breastfeeding in public is important for similar reasons to discouraging smoking in public places. We want to discourage smoking uh, in public places for health reasons, for public health reasons, but also because uh, seeing people smoking normalises it. And if children continually see people smoking, it will seem to them to be normal behaviour and they will do it. Similarly, seeing mothers breastfeeding in public normalises breastfeeding. So even if children and young people haven't seen a young member of their own family being breastfed, it will still be part of normal expected maternal behaviour. 
Statistics published last year indicate that over 47% of babies were breastfed at 10 days, and that fell to 36% at 68 weeks. 25% uh, of those were exclusively uh, breastfed. This, unfortunately, is very similar to the breastfeeding rates of 10 years ago. So we don't seem to be any near hitting the target of 50% at six weeks. And that's despite the passage of Elaine Smith's bill. And I, like others, believe that no more needs to be done to promote the advantages of the breastfeeding and, uh, and, and to actually point out that uh, this legislation needs to be used and publicised. I also think we need to dispel some of the negative information which deters too many women from even considering breastfeeding. I think one of those factors is the perception that breastfeeding is bound to be very difficult and very sore. I mean, it can be for some women, and as Elaine Smith said, a small proportion of women are actually unable to breastfeed at all, and that should be understood. But most women can breastfeed, and some women find breastfeeding feeding very easy and very straightforward. And actually, I was one of them. I had three children, breastfed them all until they all decided that they wanted to give up. Uh, and I have absolutely no recollection of finding it very difficult. Birth was another matter, I have to say. Um, having the opportunity to breastfeed on demand, however, was another matter. Uh, my children are now 28, 26 and 24, and in those days breastfeeding in public places was pretty difficult, unless you were wearing a suitably encompassing and camouflaging garment. I also returned to work full-time when my eldest child was four months old. Uh, my, child's son, my, uh, child, my son's childminder was actually very supportive and had breastfed all five of her children, but I had to express milk for my son in a toilet at work. Uh, and I've never prepared anybody else's meal in a toilet, not even the dog's meal. But let's talk, uh, the, the other thing I want to draw attention to is the, uh, these weight charts, which actually uh, indicated that children should put on you know, double their weight at a certain time and triple their weight another time. Those don't work for a breastfeeding child. The breastfed children don't put on weight as fast, and that ought to be understood so that breastfeeding mothers don't feel that somehow they're not giving enough nutrition uh, to their children. But there are a whole, a whole load of advantages, I believe. Most importantly, the child's health, as others have said. Uh, actually, my youngest son was born during a norovirus epidemic, uh, which was pretty worrying because, uh, you know, for newborns uh, bo uh, 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 born at that time, and all five of our family managed to get it. My six-week-old baby was actually the least ill of all of us because he was getting my antibodies. It actually protected him, unlike other children of that age. And night feeding, I think, was easy. There's no messing around, heating up bottles at the right temperature and all that nonsense. I could almost literally do it in my sleep, not that I would necessarily recommend it. Partners obviously can't be much help with, uh, with the feeding, but there are other nighttime jobs like changing nappies and so on that they can assist with. And then also there's the weight loss as well. I went back to my pre-pregnancy weight fairly quickly after having given birth. And I have to say, all my children were born during the Christmas and New Year period. And I was able to have all the Christmas goodies, the chocolates, the cheese, the Christmas cake, everything else, and still lose weight. Happy days, which <laughs> never, had, never came back, unfortunately. So altogether, I would say breastfeeding is great for babies, great for their mothers. More needs to be done to enable more, more mums to breastfeed and to portray breastfeeding as a positive choice to enable people to positively choose to, to, to choose the most natural way possible of nourishing their babies. Many thanks. Now call on Jane Baxter to be followed by Mary Scanlon. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And thank you too to Elaine Smith for securing today's debate and for all her years of campaigning to encourage and support breastfeeding, breastfeeding in Scotland, particularly, of course, in bringing forward the Breastfeeding Act. And I'm proud that there have been a number of other progressive advances in legislation and policy over the years to support increases in breastfeeding rates. Most women giving birth in Scotland today know about the multiple benefits breastfeeding brings. And most women giving birth in Scotland today also intend to breastfeed their baby. However, this good news is tempered by the fact that overall breastfeeding rates are static. And NCT research shows that high rates of mothers stop breastfeeding or move to mixed feeding before they want to. So policy intended to educate expectant parents about the benefits of breastfeeding would seem to be working, but it's clearly just one part of the story. Without being situated within a culture that actively supports, understands and enables breastfeeding, this policy remains stunted in its potential to transform breastfeeding initiation rates and how long mothers breastfeed for. Further progress in employment practice, childcare arrangements and effective support networks will help to bring about this change. But we also need to face up to persisting attitudes towards women's bodies and women's choices. I'd like to stand here and say that it's incredible that a woman like Emily Slough can be labelled a tramp for breastfeeding her child in a public place. But we live in a society that plasters boobs everywhere in a sexual context, where women's bodies are reduced to an image that society at large can appropriate for comment and criticism, and where mothers feel exposed and judged on a daily basis. 
While we are getting better at telling mothers about the benefits of breastfeeding and providing support for breastfeeding, we are also falling short at speaking to people more widely. This debate today is an important part of the discussion about how we tackle negative attitudes about not just breastfeeding, but women more generally. Elaine Smith's suggestion of promoting the legislation across the country is entirely sensible. For it's not just new mothers who need to know they live in a country that in theory supports breastfeeding. The country they live in must support it in practice. It demands a multifaceted approach. The more people see breastfeeding in public, the more normal it will become. And the more normal it becomes, the more people will feel they can breastfeed in public. While we work on changing attitudes in, on, in general sense, we can work within the space we have to get more women breastfeeding. And that's precisely what's happening in Fife. We know that women least likely to breastfeed are younger women and women living in low-income areas. NHS Fife's Breastfeeding Peer Support Project has driven up breastfeeding in deprived areas and all of Fife's community health partnerships have just been awarded the UNICEF Stage 3 Award. The team in Fife also recognise that whilst unfair, many women do feel embarrassed and unsure about breastfeeding in public. So it provides a guide for new parents listing public places in Fife that actively support breastfeeding. The more mums just do it, the more it will seem like just a thing to do and that will change culture over time. Fife knows that the only approach that works is one that puts the mother at the centre, which is why it's crucial that initiatives like this continue to receive direct funding from the government. Women who breastfeed in public should not have to cover it up or apologise for it. Women who breastfeed should not be seen as tramps or pushy middle-class mums. They should be seen as people feeding another little person. It really is that simple. I think most people in Scotland recognise that it's in everyone's interest that infants receive the nutrition that will give them the very best start in life. It's our collective responsibility to address the attitudes towards breastfeeding, not just in, ex in expecting couples, but in society at large. Thank you. Thanks very much. And due to the large number of members still wishing to speak in the debate, I'm minded to accept a motion under Rule 8.14.3 that the debate be extended by up to 30 minutes. Would you like to move? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so I put the question, are we agreed that we'll just extend the debate? Please. Thank you. So we are agreed. And I now call on Mary Scanlon to be followed by Dr Richard Simpson. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, presiding officer. I would also like to thank Colleen Smith for securing this debate uh, and outlining so many of the benefits of breastfeeding. As others have said, Elaine has been a long-term ambassador for breastfeeding. In fact, I remember nagging my daughter to breastfeed her first child, who was born in 2001. And I proudly reported back to Elaine when the Parliament was up the road that my daughter did breastfeed for several months <laughs> as a result. Uh, but listening to Cara Hilton also reminded me of when uh, my children were born in Dundee Royal Infirmary uh, around 40 years ago. And indeed, I was the only mum on the Florence Nightingale type wards of nearly 30 women uh, who was breastfeeding. So it's interesting to see how little has changed. Uh, but like others, I condemn the action taken against Emily Slough in Staffordshire with a photograph taken without her permission, being placed on a social networking site and with all the disrespectful comments. However, I'm not sure if this incident would in fact have been in breach of the Breastfeeding Scotland Act 2005. And I say I'm not sure, perhaps the Minister will make that clear. But as the motion states, uh, the Breastfeeding Act makes it illegal to stop or attempt to stop mothers breastfeeding in public. It would certainly have been in breach of the tone and intention uh, of the Act and the regulations, which state th that it's about reassuring mothers and, and to help breastfeeding in public become a social norm. Uh, Elaine Smith uh, mentioned the Breastfeeding Act. Uh, however, I think like so often in this Parliament, it's not about the legislation. Uh, the legislation is fine. It's how that legislation is enforced and implemented that really does matters, matter. The benefits to both babies and mothers are well stated, have been well stated by uh, all speakers uh, on this topic, from protecting babies from common childhood diseases and, as uh, Elaine Murray said, helping mothers return to their pre-pregnancy weight. However, one of the most important benefits has to be the convenience of no bottles and no sterilisation, as well, of course, as the constant supply. Uh, but I feel I have to say, 
I recognise, and, and I'm a very strong advocate of breastfeeding, but I've also been aware of many mothers who want to breastfeed, and they do find it difficult. So I think we do need to recognise that too. I found it very interesting to... Yeah? Liam Smith. Thank Mary Scanlon for taking the intervention. Just on that point, would you then recognise with me that support from professionals is absolutely vital? Mary Scanlon. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I, I, and I think quite often it's about freeing up the bed in hospital. I don't expect people to stay in for four days, as Cara Hilton said, but they could be given that help and support at home. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. Uh, but it is interesting to note also that older mothers are more likely to breastfeed than young mothers. In 2012-13 in Scotland, for mothers under 20, I was surprised that only 5% breastfed their babies at 6 to 8 weeks, compared to 34% of mothers aged 40 and over. But as others said, the main statistic uh, here is that 41% of mothers in the least provide uh, deprived areas when exclusively breastfeeding at six to eight weeks, three times greater than mothers in the most deprived areas. And when you consider the cost of infant formula, that is undoubtedly an area where I think Elaine Smith said more support, more awareness and more help could be given. Uh, so Scotland still does compare favourably with Wales and Northern Ireland in terms of breastfeeding, and we're only 2% behind England in terms of exclusive breastfeeding at six weeks. But I think we can do better. But like others, I commend Elaine Smith on bringing this debate to the Parliament and for helping us all to raise awareness of breastfeeding. There is no doubting the health benefits to baby and mother, but also, as Elaine Smith said, it should not be lost, the savings to the public purse and, of course, the savings to families, which I've mentioned, particularly from the most deprived backgrounds. So, presiding officer, more can be done to encourage and support more women to breastfeed and also to make breastfeeding in public the social norm, as Jane Baxter said. And I do hope that this debate will go some way to helping to achieve this. Many thanks. Now I call on Dr Richard Simpson to be followed by Duncan McNeill. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I join others by congratulating Elaine Smith on obtaining this member's debate? As others have already said, Elaine has made this a core issue for her over the entire length of the Parliament, uh, including, of course, her, her member's bill, uh, which has uh, changed the, some of the public perception, but more, I think, needs to be done. Uh, the publication in 2011 of Improving Maternal and Infant Nutrition, a Framework for Action, was a useful document. And, and I think this should now be seen in the context of the Early Years Collaborative as it develops and also the Family Nurse Partnership, uh, amongst other initiatives. Its adoption of the World Health Organization's view that breastfeeding should be exclusive in the first six months uh, was also welcome. But there is recognition in the report that breastfeeding is not only crucial for the development of the infant, but for the good health in the future of the mother, including, of course, as others have already mentioned, a return to pre-pregnancy weight, uh, which is something of increasing importance as obesity becomes ever more prevalent within Scotland. The infants who do get the immunological benefit of breast milk, which cannot be supplied by uh, formula milk, uh, do have reduced risks of ear, respiratory, gastrointestinal and urinary tract infections, allergic disease including eczema, asthma and wheezing, type 1 diabetes, and they're also much less likely to be overweight, again contributing to the major public health issue of, of, of obesity. Furthermore, infants who are breastfed are less at risk of childhood leukaemia and sudden unexplained infant death. And there may also be an association with improved cognitive development. Preterm babies that are breastfed are likely to have better eyesight and brain development than those who are not and have a reduced risk of necrotizing enterocolitis. The factors associated with uh, influencing breastfeeding are many and varied. But particularly for preterm babies where there is considerable difficulty and they may have to be, I think as Cara Hilton said, tube fed as happened to one of my grandsons, uh, that the help those mothers need is particularly important. So the quality of assistance during delivery and in the first few days is important. And yet we have a situation where from the time that I was a student when there was 14 days lying in, as it was called, 
many, many mothers now go home within a few hours of delivery. Have we really adjusted the services to accommodate this? Because I believe that's a factor in the poor breastfeeding rates that we still have. I think that once patients do get out, once mothers do get out, then the support both professional and peer-to-peer -peer is important. So can I ask the Minister whether there is now a comprehensive marking, mapping of the accessibility of breastfeeding and peer support groups? The, the government, I have to say, takes some responsibility for our problems in that they cut the midwifery student intake by 40% some three years ago. Frankly, this was a foolish decision, which was wrong for Scotland and certainly wrong for the UK, where there were serious shortages of midwives and still are. Worse still, it resulted in the precipitate closure of three university schools of midwifery. The subsequent partial reversal uh, with, with, an inc with, uh, with increases came too late to reopen those schools. And at the same time, we have really serious problems about health visitors, recruitment and training. This is still being left to health boards. And I think that that's, again, not the correct decision. I think the government needs to take a far stronger hold of the training of health visitors who can be critically important to the sustaining of breastfeeding, uh, uh, not just the establishment of it. The, the, uh, there is a programme of research going on which Dundee is involved in. They've had very good uh, work on incentives in relation to smoking, and they're now doing a project uh, in association with an English uh, unit on p potential of financial vouchers, incentives, and breastfeeding. It'll be interesting to see how that, uh, uh, um, how that emerges and whether that research should be adopted or not. I want to finish, Deputy Presiding Officer, on one or two points very quickly. One important issue which hasn't been mentioned by other speakers is that Scotland has only one breast milk bank. There are 17 in the United Kingdom, and I wonder if there are plans to extend this with a second. Because of our geography, I think running one only in Scotland is not particularly good, good as, a, as a measure. Can I also ask the Minister, if not in her speech, because she will not have time, to actually give us an update at some point in the implementation plan? And in that regard, I echo Elaine Smith's regrets that the post of a breastfeeding champion or lead was abolished and that there has never been a debate led by any government on breastfeeding. This is far too short a time, even with the extension which has been granted by order, this has been far too short a time to, de to debate what is actually a very, very important subject. And I would therefore ask the Minister to try and get government time to debate this in a much fuller way. But already I think we've had a very good debate on this subject. Thanks so much. And I now call on Duncan McNeill to be followed by Neil Finlay. <clears throat> thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and thank Elaine Smith for bringing forward this debate today. Uh, I first became aware of her passion for this issue when I was on the Health Committee uh, you know, almost a decade ago uh, through the passage of, of her breastfeeding bill. Um, it was interesting to note that uh, that, that committee... Um, there were six females uh, on that committee to three males. There was, there, were, there was a female convener, a female deputy convener, and uh, I think the minister was on that committee at the passage of that bill as well. So it was all very interesting for us males on that to get all the various um, um, you know, anecdotes and stories about, uh, about this issue. But I think the committee shared completely the ambition of the bill to confirm the rights of the child, to recognise clearly the health benefits which have been described today to the mother and the child, and indeed to wider society. Um, and it was, in, uh, of course, a real opportunity to tackle the culture and attitudes through public debate that that opportunity uh, brought in and around breastfeeding and it generated a lot of discussion at that time you know in wider this, uh, society but my uh, my desire to speak in this debate today was not just to you know for a trip down memory lane uh, to recall these issues Elaine Smith will be pleased to hear that one of the reasons I'm speaking here this morning and uh, today in this members debate uh, that that this debate that she has sponsored today has initiated yet again um, uh, the debate and interest in my community. On Monday afternoon, I was contacted 
uh, uh, with an inquiry about this debate, what it was about, what it would be covering, uh, whether it would come along. Um, and I decided to meet with those people on Tuesday in Port Glasgow Health Centre. And I'm here today as a reporter of that very interesting debate. It was a rolling de debate that took place in a canteen space in Port Glasgow Health Centre. There were all women there apart from me, and they, 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 they contributed in, in, in between mouthfuls of their signage and their cup of tea. There were professional women there. There were lay people there who all gave a view about breastfeeding and, indeed, the challenges. Now, well, Elaine Smith will be pleased that that debate was triggered by, by this debate today and that people genuinely interested in how we can challenge this, uh, you know, make a reality of the ambition of her bill and, indeed, the, 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 the government policy. Might, Elaine Smith might be saddened to know, and I'm sure she is aware, but the gap between the very affluent areas of, of the wider local authority area and the poorest is something like 80% breastfeeding in affluent areas against the low of 2% in some of our less affluent areas. So this is, uh, this, is, uh, this is a challenge. As I said, this was a very fluid debate. People were coming in. They were encouraged to give their views. And some of those, and I'll be, uh, be as quick as I can, but I wanted you justice to get, get on the record today. The, the, the issues that were raised and I recorded were you know, the change in reality, the expectation of young mother, mothers uh, and the pressures that are on them in this modern day, the choices they have have got to be balanced with those pressures. The lives they lead are very different from their grandmothers, but it does put pressures on them. And, and despite motherhood, they, don't, they are not and don't see themselves being confined with that, that motherhood. They are anxious to get back to work and go back to work for that financial reasons. And indeed, they want to have their social life back again as well, which they don't see as, as, as maybe compatible. Th these are not my views, I should caution. But uh, you know, I'm reporting here about the very lively debate that took place between lay people and, and, uh, and indeed uh, the professionals. The, you know, I've covered the social areas. There, there, are, there are also, and it's been mentioned here, there are fewer midwives. There is less support now than there was perceived, and I know there's specific schemes for specific groups. Uh, breastfeeding competes with child protection now in the job remit of some of the people who, are, who would have previously delivered this. The smoking cessation, addiction services, there's a very difficult landscape out there and the debate is necessary because I believe that breastfeeding Neil. needs to get some sort of parity about these issues and I say that from a, a health a committee point of view in terms of the focus on early years and how we change and transform lives in Scotland. Thank you. Thank you. Now call on Neil Finlay after which we'll move to the Cabinet Secretary for the closing speech. Thanks, President Officer. Can I thank my friend and colleague Elaine Smith for bringing this motion before Parliament and indeed for her unwavering uh, commitment to the promotion of breastfeeding, a, a very important public health matter. I think this is an excellent example of a campaigning MSP sticking with an issue and seeing it through in order to change the law and change people's lives. Um, breastfeeding, of course, is the most natural thing in the world. It helps mother and baby keep healthy, develops attachment, reduces the risk of illness and uh, as uh, Dr Simpson listed, a whole range of things, cancer, diabetes, obesity, you know, the list goes on and on for the, the benefits both to the mother and child. Um, I, I, I know we're in a bit of anecdotal mood today, so it, it may come as no surprise to my sisters in the chamber that I have personally not breastfed my daughter. Um, but given the uh, weight loss uh, advantages that Elaine Murray uh, explained, I really wish I had, uh, because I maybe wouldn't have struggled with uh, keeping my weight down over the years. Um, and of course, um, breast milk is readily available. Uh, no need to go to the shops, uh, always at the right temperature. No need to mix or faff around with packets, it comes on its own. Uh, no need for bottles or sterilising equipment or kettles or all that stuff that I remember from around 18 years ago myself. And of course, and very importantly, it's free and mothers who breastfeed save significant amounts of money because they don't have to pay for 
formula milk and all the palaver that goes with it. Uh, and with all those qualities, I think it's surprising that it's not the most expensive product on the planet, a superfood that is absolutely free. Yet we know that, as people have mentioned, the take-up rates are still very lo low, very low across the UK, uh, as we see initial uh, rates uh, highest in England, Scotland at 71 per cent, and then goes right down when, uh, for after six weeks, right down to figures of 22 per cent in Scotland and remarkably only 13 per cent in Northern Ireland. So while we're not the worst in the UK, we have a long way to go to drive up rates. And I think Duncan McNeill's contribution uh, was uh, very powerful because I think uh, take-up rates of breastfeeding actually very accurately reflect the health inequalities across Scotland. And that is something that we have to address and have to address uh, across the whole range of uh, uh, portfolios in this parliament. And why are these take-up rates so low? Well, without doubt, there are educational and cultural issues, lack of knowledge, fear, embarrassment, stigma, social awkwardness, women afraid to breastfeed in public because of the reaction of others. And people have mentioned stories about you know, people being asked to leave restaurants or bars or shopping centres by owners who appear to be living in a wholly different age. Uh, and today of all days, I think we should reflect on the further misuse of social media when we look at the case that's been mentioned of Emily Slough. Um, I think that is remarkable that we had someone who had their photo taken when they had no knowledge of it and then put online their character attacked uh, by people who neither knew her or cared for her and had no thought whatsoever of the impact that that would have on her or her family. I find it thoroughly depressing that the wonder of technology is being used in such a depressing way. But it's an inspirational at the same time that she did not give in to these people and it inspired her to act. And I think that's the way to deal with those who disparage people and who try and assass assassinate their character from their lonely bed sit with her behind their uh, computer terminal. Um, Elaine Smith's bill protects the rights of mothers and makes it illegal, and I think we shouldn't forget that, illegal to stop or attempt to stop mothers breastfeeding in public and it attempts to make breastfeeding a social norm. And that is what it should be, something that is totally natural. And I hope the government will continue to work to promote the multitude of good reasons for breastfeeding and work with their councils, their colleges, universities, and of course workplaces and in our communities to break down those barriers that prevent more women from best breastfeeding. I would encourage Elaine Smith to keep up her very effective campaigning on this issue and she will receive support, I'm sure, from across this parliament. Finally, President Officer, two weeks ago, a conference was supposed to be held on uh, Scotland's health challenges at Dynamic Earth. That conference was cancelled because speaker after speaker withdrew because it emerged that the, the event was being sponsored by Nestle one of the large corporations Elaine Smith spoke about and whose activity in the developing world undermines breastfeeding amongst the populations of those countries. This is very, still very much a live geopolitical issue and it hasn't you gone away. You are now in your sixth minute. Thanks very much. <laughs> Cabinet Secretary, would you like to close the debate on behalf of the Government? Mm -hmm. Seven minutes or thereby. Uh, I think we've had a, a very interesting debate here today and I'd like, like others to thank Elaine Smith for bringing this important debate uh, to Parliament and I'm glad that we waited to welcome the mums to the gallery and of course the, the staff uh, who are there as well. We know about the, the various media articles on the, the public uh, shaming me meted out to mothers who choose to breastfeed their babies in public. Uh, one that's been highlighted a lot today has been the, the case of Emily Slough and of course uh, her fight back campaign which I think is very inspiring uh, to others. Um, but it does show that there is still a fair way to go to bring about a shift in public attitudes to make uh, breastfeeding the, the norm. The Breastfeeding Etc. Scotland Act 2005 protects the right of any person to feed a child when required and in the most appropriate place for them without the fear of interruption or criticism. A few members, Cara Hilton, Elaine Smith and Elaine Murray, have asked about the promotion of that legislation and indeed about the leaflet. I am I'm able to inform members that the leaflet is currently being updated to coincide with the 10th anniversary of the Breastfeeding Act in 2015, 
which will provide a, an opportunity to uh, re-promote um, the, the, the benefits of the legislation, but also the fact that the rights of people uh, within that legislation so will um, keep people informed uh, about that in due course. Richard Simpson raised a number of questions. I think probably best for me to write or, uh, or arrange for Michael Matheson possibly to write to him with uh, answers to the questions that he, he has raised. The latest infant feeding survey uh, 2010, which people have referred to, reports uh, more positively about the experiences of women in Scotland compared to other areas of the UK. But it does, however, highlight the challenges that breastfeeding in public brings. Good nutrition, as has been said by many, from the earliest days of life will contribute, to, contribute significantly to the long-term health of Scotland's population. In 2011, we published Improving Maternal and Infant Nutrition, a Framework for Action. The framework outlines the measures that should be taken by all organisations working with families to ensure that every parent is supported to give their baby the very best nutritional start in life. We all know about the short and long-term health benefits of breastfeeding for both mothers and infants. So why have breastfeeding rates remained steady at around 36.5% of babies being breastfed at six to eight week review in 12-13? And I think the answer is because there are so many factors which influence a mother's infant feeding decision, whether it's family and peer pressure, uh, culture, public attitudes, and the support from professionals are, are just a few among many. So effective strategies to encourage and enable more women to initiate and maintain breastfeeding cannot be delivered only by health professionals, policy development or indeed by legislation, but instead by taking a supportive and collaborative approach. We want to make sure that parents understand that breast milk will contribute to a baby's future health for however long mothers choose to breastfeed and feel supported and encouraged from the earliest days. And there's also very important messages about the benefit uh, to the mums themselves, which we've heard spoken about today. Research is clear that the greatest benefits for mother and baby are gained through exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months. As has been said, it's a natural way to feed babies and infants. It provides the most comprehensive source of nutrition for the first six months of a baby's life and contains a range of immunological substances that cannot be manufactured uh, in, uh, in formula milk. We also want to strengthen the NHS contribution by improving access to NHS care during the antenatal period for those women least likely to consider breastfeeding and most in need of encouragement and support. Good relationships built up with health professionals in the antenatal period will help to support mothers to start breastfeeding and maintain it in the earliest weeks of their babies' li lives. And to help achieve this, the Scottish Government provides funding of around two and a half million per year to health boards to implement the Framework's action plan, including a range of breastfeeding support activities and interventions. We also recognise the contribution that the UNICEF Baby Friendly Initiative makes to improving the care of mothers and babies. Every single NHS board in Scotland is working towards achieving and maintaining the Baby Friendly Initiative status in both hospital and community settings. Demonstrating our commitment to UNICEF Baby Friendly, the Scottish Government has funded a, a full-time professional officer for Scotland for four years and is providing financial support to help all NHS boards to achieve this uh, prestigious award. Progress is being made nationally, with 84% of births in Scotland taking place in a BFI-accredited hospital, which compares very well to elsewhere. As well as supporting women in making the important decision on how to feed their baby, support and advice needs to be readily available postnatally. Peer support is a key way of providing encouragement to families and their communities. It enables women to share similar experiences to newly breastfeeding mums, to offer both emotional and practical support, uh, complementing that which is offered by professionals, and of course can be mutually beneficial to the peer supporter and the supported mother. The provision of breastfeeding peer support needs to be fully integrated within uh, local service planning and delivery regarding the recruitment, training and ongoing supervision of the peer supporter. And to support this, NHS Scotland's breastfeeding peer support guidance was published in November last year. Findings from the Growing Up in Scotland longitudinal study in April uh, this year found that there has been an increased understanding about the importance of breastfeeding and its long-term benefits. 
Breastfeeding rates in the most deprived areas of Scotland have increased over the last decade, uh, and that's a good thing, with the overall breastfeeding rates at the first visit increasing from 24.3% uh, in uh, 2001 to 30.7% in 2012 13. So, yes, of course. <clears throat> Ben Smith. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for taking the intervention, President Officer, but I wonder if she might consider committing to meeting with the authors of Preventing Disease and Saving Resources because of the, the amount of money the NHS could save as proven by their research. I'd like to take that suggestion forward. It may be more appropriate for Michael Matheson to do that, but I'll certainly take that, that forward with him. Um, the increase in the overall breastfeeding rates in the most deprived areas is mainly due to an increase in the percentage of mums who are mixed feeding their child, indicating that more mothers in these areas are initiating breastfeeding and continue to give their babies some breast milk in the early weeks of life. So we have to handle that quite carefully because we want mums to at least give their baby some breast milk while, of course, promoting the clear message that exclusive breastfeeding is best but any breastfeeding is better than none. And those are careful messages and difficult messages sometimes that professionals have to, have to wrestle with. In conclusion, I think we'd all agree that Scotland should celebrate and support women making the choice to breastfeed, regardless of where or how long they choose to do so, and that we all have a part to play in making this happen. I'll certainly take forward many of the issues um, and suggestions made during this debate, and I'll discuss them uh, with Michael Matheson on how best to take them forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for taking part. I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30.